In this video, we're going to continue our topic on macroeconomic indicators by talking about measures of aggregate price level. You'll often hear people talk about inflation or changes in prices as an important indicator of what's going on in the economy. Uh, and we're gonna talk here about two different ways to measure aggregate price changes. The first is the GDP deflator, and the second is the CPI index. Both of these are different ways of constructing an index of aggregate prices that we can then use to measure the rate of inflation. Inflation is just the change in aggregate price level. It's the percent change in aggregate price level from one period to the next, okay? Or the growth rate in aggregate of aggregate prices. So the first thing that we need to do to calculate inflation rates is to figure out how to calculate the aggregate price level. That's actually a really, really difficult question. How do we calculate the aggregate price level? Because it asks us to average prices across all products, across all stores, across right, our whole geography. So there's not necessarily one right way to calculate the aggregate price level. We actually have lots of different price indices that we use to calculate inflation rates for different types of questions. But in this class, we're just gonna be talking about two of them. So we'll talk here first about the GDP deflator method using the same example that we were talking about last time. All right, so what I've done is I've just got my numbers here from the last video for nominal and real GDP. And then we're going to use those to calculate the GDP deflator, which is one measure of aggregate price level, and then calculate our inflation rate based on the GDP deflator. The GDP deflator method is basically to take a ratio of nominal to real GDP multiplied by 100 to create our price index. So let's think for a minute about what that means. Nominal GDP uses current year production and current year prices. Real GDP uses current year production and base year prices. So when I divide, I have a ratio of prices in the current year to prices in the base year. And that's exactly what your GDP deflator is gonna tell you. How high are prices in this year relative to the base year? And then we basically index everything to be equal to 100 in the base year. So let's do some calculations and see how that works out in this example. Of course, in the base year, in 2004, my price index will be equal to 100. That will always be true. In the base year, your price index will always be equal to 100 by design. In 2005, oops, I've got nominal GDP over real GDP times 100 and that gives me 162. Oops. In 2006, I've got 760 over 400 times 100, and that will give me 190. So, the GDP deflator tells me how high are prices in the current year relative to the base year. So because in 2005 the GDP deflator is equal to 162, I know that prices in 2005 were 62% higher than in 2004, because 2004 is our base year. In 2006, I know prices were 90% higher than in 2004. This is a little bit different than the way that we would calculate the annual rate of inflation because the annual rate of inflation would be the percent change in prices from one year to the next. So what we wanna to do to calculate the inflation rate is to use our new minus old over old formula to find changes in our GDP deflator, which is the price index in this example. 
So from 2004 to 2005, I've got 162 minus 100 divided by, oops, 100. And that will give me 62%. You'll notice that this inflation rate is the same as the difference between 2004 and 2005 in the GDP deflator. The reason is because the denominator of our fraction here is 100, okay? This is only true in the base year, okay? When we use the base year as the first year in our inflation calculation. So always use, this is a really common mistake, you always need to use your new minus old over old formula in order to get the right answer when you're looking at inflation in years other than the base year. So from 2005 to 2006, my rate of inflation would be 190 minus 162 over 162. Now, this is not going to be equal to 90%. It's also not going to be equal to 28%, which is the difference between GDP deflator in 2005 and 2006, okay? Instead, you've got to plug that into your calculator and it will give you 0 0.173 or 17.3% as the rate of inflation between 2005 and 2006. So the moral of the story is always use the new minus old over old calculation when calculating your inflation rate, okay? So here's the GDP deflator method of calculating inflation. I told you we're gonna talk about one other method for calculating an inf the inflation rate, and that's because the CPI method is the most commonly cited method to calculate inflation. So we want to understand why we use CPI rather than GDP. Of course, some people will also look at the GDP deflator method. Um, why is the CPI method preferred? Uh, uh, what's the difference between these two methods? So here, the last part of this video, I'm just going to introduce the CPI uh, method, uh, and then we'll do a practice problem with that in the next video. All right, so... CPI stands for the Consumer Price Index, okay? So here, instead of thinking about production, which is what we're thinking about when we calculate GDP, we're thinking about consumption. What's important to the consumer? The GDP deflator method creates a price index based on domestic production because that's what goes into GDP. But when we're talking about changes in prices over time, we're much more likely interested in the experience of an average consumer. So the CPI uh, uses a basket of goods based on the Consumer Expenditure Survey. Yes, the government does a survey to figure out what are people buying. We look at the average consumption across a variety of different products, and then we come up with some basket of goods. I don't know why it's called a basket, but that's what we call it. It means just a group of products that we're going to go find the prices of. The basket of goods that we use to calculate CPI contains hundreds of different products. So we break these products down into eight broad categories. Food and drink, housing, apparel, transportation, medical care, recreation, communication and education, and other goods and services. And these categories cover basically everything that consumers buy. Now, you might see news articles that report about the rising cost of healthcare. Most of the time, this is based on our CPI index for our medical care category. So this is a really useful thing for you to understand in terms of how we measure changes in price over time and how we use CPI to understand inflation rates. On the next page, we're gonna go through an example where we calculate inflation using both the GDP deflator method and the CPI method. Then we'll compare and contrast. I want you to go through the first part, calculating inflation using the GDP deflator on your own. I'll post an optional video where I go through the solutions to that part of the problem, but we've already done that. So if you feel confident in your ability to calculate the inflation rate using GDP deflator, feel free to skip the next video.
I'll join you in the following video to calculate inflation using the CPI method and then compare and contrast.